Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the channel. And today we are coming in with a top five video of the recruiting restrictions that everybody is afraid to have in their dynasty. Now, if you want to challenge, these are the recruiting restrictions for you, and we'll have a countdown one through five. And some of them are easier than others, some of them are harder. But if you're looking for a challenge in your dynasty, I suggest you follow one of these. So let's get into it. So first is going to be the prestige level challenge. Now there have been other YouTubers that have done this and this is just kind of one, each one of these has three rules. So the prestige level challenge is pretty simple and it, pr it probably is the easiest out of these five. So pretty much you have to go after guys that are your prestige as a school and then also guys that are in your region and also no JUCO. So, UNLV, for example, is a one-star school, so we can only go after, actually, they're a two-star school. We can only go after two stars or below, so they are in the southwest as well, so we can only go after guys in these five states, also including Hawaii. I guess you can throw Hawaii in there, and I would leave out Texas just because I would consider that just a pure south, so only these five states we can recruit in and only two stars. So just to give you kind of a uh, measurement stick on what caliber guys you can go after, looks like in Nevada would be around 1,600 and anybody below that. Then Arizona is a state with a lot of prospects usually, not the most, but they're pretty much a mid-tier state. So the highest there would be about 1,548, somewhere around that. I expect 1,500 to be the highest prestige for a two-star to go after there. Then California, obviously being the recruit with uh, the state with the most recruits, probably of any state, maybe New York and Florida might have more, maybe Texas or Michigan, but I think these will probably be the highest quality guys. So if you start a dynasty in the Southwest, I mean, California is probably going to be your recruiting bed and probably where you're going to get a lot of your best athletes, because look at these guys are coming at 63 overall, 61, just low 60s and obviously you can't go after any juco so you will have to go after true freshmen and this one is kind of challenging but it's a little bit easier than the rest so number two the blind audition challenge and this one is kind of a build off of the last one of the prestige level and just building off of our unlv example add people from your prestige so unlv is a two-star prestige but do not scout them so I think there's a way there's not a way around the computer automatically scouting guys after the first week of the season because you can see some of these guys are 10 percent 15 percent i think they just automatically apply them on their own in the preseason but even then it's it's good enough you only you're only seeing maybe one or two ratings at a time anyway so i guess that's good enough but then you don't scout them the rest of the year and what this does it kind of gives you kind of a blind type of scouting report on them so that you can see the grades but you don't know if they're going to be a bust or a gem when they come on your roster a guy like ralph montgomery for example 66 overall now he does have plus three right now but with one rating unlocked it's easier to see the busts and the uh gems as far as offensive linemen go but for other positions it's kind of hard because like this 15 percent. i mean you can't really tell if this guy's gonna be a bust or a gem or just what he's supposed to be at 59 overall matter of fact let's sim to the end of this season and to see how these guys end up remember no juco's and your prestige so let's just see so we have simmed the rest of this season and now i just want to see what based on our commits right now what they look like so this guy larry meadows is 58 overall he ends up being a 61 so that pays off fred lewis 63 overall he goes up as well so we're two for two so far kyle fisher a 60 overall so he goes down four so he would be considered a bust for us what about john johnson 55 overall he goes down as well so we're kind of at 50 percent he goes up and you guys kind of get it so you don't scout at all and then once they do commit to your school you can scout them because then you'll get to find out if they're a bust or whether or not they're good recruits number three the unlock state challenge now this one has three rules and it's pretty simple we're gonna in this example we're gonna start out with new mexico state now rule number one you must start with recruiting in one state 
and that could be the state you're in. If you're in a state with not a lot of prospects, you can kind of pick the neighboring state. Rule number two, you unlock a state by winning at least by double digits. So if I have a nine point victory, I can't unlock another state. But if I have a 10 point victory, I can unlock a neighboring state. So if we start out in New Mexico, that means if I win by 10, I can uh, I can either unlock Arizona, I can unlock Utah, but I can unlock Colorado or Texas. So with each win by double digits, you keep unlocking a neighboring state. So there could be a chance you do unlock about 12 states in your first year, but to give yourself a challenge, start with a one-star school and just unlock each state with each double-digit victory. And if you're a one-star school, there's a chance you might go one in 11 and that one win might not even unlock any states. So you might be stuck recruiting in one state for one, maybe even going into the second year, maybe a couple games in, you never know. But if to give you a challenge, you can start out as a walk-on school or just a one-star where it's hard to get victories. So even if you have four victories on a season, one of those might be double digit. You might be unlocking not a lot of states each season, but the goal is to eventually unlock every state and then when that's done, I mean, you kind of beat the challenge and pretty much win a national championship and kind of build your dynasty like that. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to do it geographically. So if you do start in a state that's smaller and just unlock all the small states around you. So if you start in the Northeast, for example, and start out with one of these colleges, maybe even like UMass, for example, you can only unlock a certain amount of states at each time. But be careful at the path you take to unlock lock each state. Because if you go, if you start in, say, Nebraska, for example, and then unlock South Dakota next, well, the next states to unlock are not big target states. Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa. I mean, those aren't big recruiting states. You kind of want to unlock the bigger states first to get good recruits. And then from there, you get to unlock the smaller states. Number four, the top five recruiting challenge. Now, this is pretty simple in concept. You can only go after guys that are top five, that you're considered top five on their list. So if you go to the search and do a search for top five schools, you can see that, you know, New Mexico State even has 82 prospects that you can go after. Now, to make this more of a challenge, you can also do this by region. So what I like to do in my Whitetails Dynasty is do top five in the Midwest region, and that will kind of open up the gates a little bit. But you can kind of expand it to everybody top five as well, and you can see there are 82 prospects. And if I were to start out in New Mexico and kind of do the region thing, I wouldn't have too many prospects. You might be able to consider Texas as Southwest. I don't like to consider them as Southwest. I kind of just consider them as the South, but you can kind of break it, break it up in West, North, East, and South, and just kind of recruit that way. So pick a region that you're in. I would kind of say that New Mexico's in the West, so you can get any Western state and kind of just add from your board from there. So Florida would be off limits. New York would be off limits. And if you wanted to, you can kind of switch regions each year. So Next year and year two of this dynasty, I could recruit just in the eastern part and not the western and kind of flip flop it that way. It is kind of tough because, yeah, top five is uh, you do have a lot of prospects right now. But if you were to add this on to maybe the prestige challenge where you're only recruiting one stars that are top five and possibly maybe even the uh, scouting where you don't unlock all of their scouting, it could be really tough. So looking at this, you know, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I wouldn't suggest doing just one stars when you do this challenge because there's not too many. I would suggest going one stars and two stars. If you are with the one, one or two star school, then you have more of a pool. You have about, I'd say about 30 something prospects you probably should have that are in top five, maybe even more than that. It looks like probably more than that here, probably around 40 or so prospects that you can go after. But it does provide that challenge because these are guys that are interested in your school. And in order to get higher prospects, you do have to do better and make sure that, you know, these top prospects are in you're in the top five of these other prospects. So it's a good challenge. I really like this one. I use it in my dynasties, like I said, and it kind of provides a good challenge because it doesn't allow you to just add anybody to the board. And with all of these challenges, no JUCOs, no JUCOs at all. Just remember that. So you're adding top five guys that are not JUCOs and that are in your region. And let's go on to number five. 
Number five, the survival mode challenge. Now this is probably gonna test your willpower definitely. And the hard part isn't even with recruiting. Now I suggest pairing this with the prestige level challenge where you only recruit your prestige or lower. And even then, if you're a one star school, I think you're kind of limited there. So I would suggest going after two stars and remember no JUCOs, but the hard part really comes in the off season with cut days. So now we get to the cut days. So now this is where you trim your roster down in a normal dynasty. But we're kind of going to go with a roulette style cut day. And what this will simulate is players leaving, players transferring, because not enough for your players transfer in dynasty, because in real life, Alabama literally has so many transfers that leave the program each year. And that goes for every other Division I school. They either go to Division II programs, they get kicked off the team, they just stop playing football altogether. So what this will simulate are players leaving naturally. So what we'll do is generate five random numbers, and no matter what random number we land on, we will cut that player when you list them from best overall to worst overall. But there is a catch. So we will run five random numbers, but we do get to save one. So let's just run five random numbers. So the first number is number 13. That will put us on our starting center, actually our backup center, Julio Garcia. And because we have two centers on the roster and he is our backup, I think he would maybe be a candidate to cut and maybe not to save since we do have a senior in front of him anyway. Our second role is number 56, and that puts us on right outside linebacker Ty Stevens. He is a number 56 ranked guy overall wise on our roster. But here's the problem. This is where it gets challenging. You have two seniors ahead of him, and he is our best recruit this season. So we did have the prestige challenge on for this one, and our top prospect was him, Ty Stevens, at 66 overall. And this would be a tough cut. Then we landed on number 20, which will put us at junior redshirt right end Jamal Holloway. He is 77 overall. That will be another starting guy gone for us. And maybe he would be a candidate to save as well. Remember, we can save one out of the five. Our, our fourth role is number eight, and this is where it gets tough. We have Nick Dadashian, who is our number one D tackle on our roster and wow, we would potentially have to cut two starters here. So, Dadashian was probably the guy I would save out of these first four, but maybe not because we would, might want to say that right outside linebacker, even though he's the lowest overall guy we've had so far, he's the future at right outside linebacker, and I don't know if we could afford to lose him. But then number five would land on number 44, and that would land on uh, our fifth string defensive tackle, Tavis Malakius and this guy would probably be cut. I would not save this guy at all, but it would likely come down to Nick Dadashian and our future at right outside linebacker with Ty Stevens. And since we don't really have a backup at uh, right outside linebacker here, as far as future goes, I think I would save him because looking at the rest of our roster, we might have a couple of other guys we can move over positions, but their overall probably wouldn't be as high if we were to red shirt Ty Stevens here and then looking at Dadashian here we do have some other guys who can play and we do have it is kind of a 13 overall dip but that's the kind of challenge you would face who do you cut who do you save you'd have to cut four out of the five so I guess my final decision would probably okay it'd probably be to keep Dadashian here he is way too much better than the other two defensive tackles here and I would have to get rid of our number one recruit. So that is the challenge here. You might have to get rid of some of your top recruits. And sometimes you never know. You could land on possibly your starting quarterback, your starting running back, your top receivers. You never know. And it, there could have been a chance we could have landed on Armani Rogers, for example, or the senior Charles Williams. And that's the challenge in this uh, restriction here at number five. And like I said, pair this one with Maybe another challenge, maybe the prestige challenge, and you got yourself a pretty hard rebuilding stage. So that will do it for the top five recruiting restrictions. Let me know if you guys have tried any of these, and all these are a pretty good challenge. And I would say pairing two of them together, I think probably the unlocking of the states would be the probably the most fun because you kind of want to see 
how many states you can unlock it and how many seasons it will take to get that far but i think the survival mode if you're thinking about a challenge that you really really want i would compare i would probably combine survival mode with also blind audition where you don't scout anybody and prestige level that will give you a pretty good challenge so that's going to do it here for the top five you're going to see a lot more of these top five videos where i just do top five in a lot of these sports games that i play so madden mlb also ncaa and maybe even one day 2k we'll see so hit subscribe hit that like button we'll be back for more top five soon so stay tuned let's get it let's go